So one of the things that you can see that we're saying uh, to the people who are hopefully going to be in the next cabinet is that to really tackle this, we all need to work together across sectors. We need to work across the community sector, the public sector, but also the private sector. And one man who's been doing a, a lot in a very short period of time to really galvanize um, the private sector is Peter Esselin, um, Alderman Peter Esselin. Um, from the City of London Corporation and the chair of Future.now. So please come and speak to us about that. Thank you very much. Uh, well, thanks very much, Helen, uh, and delighted uh, to be here. Um, actually, what I want to build on, really, is a lot of what we have heard uh, Helen talk about, and we, we are making some great progress. But realistically, we do have uh, a digital skills crisis. Uh, and to put that in context, um, if we look at the scale uh, of that challenge here in the UK today, uh, and yeah, Helen shared a little bit of that, but at that basic level, uh, today we have a divided society. Because in practice, whether it is the 4.3 million people who don't have any skills, uh, whether it is uh, the additional 7.6 making the 11.9, who really do not have the skills to engage in life, to engage in work, um, then we really create this divided society. And whilst there are great initiatives like Good Things Foundation and the online uh, centre that are taking place, the challenge is that this challenge is going to get even bigger. Because as we look forward and look to uh, the people in work, as we look to the evolving nature uh, of work uh, here in the UK but internationally, we then see that the scale of that challenge is not just the 11.9 people who don't have the skills today, but as we look to the skills of the future, we see that that number growing uh, even more to 17.3 million people, people in work today, who increasingly will not have the skills uh, to meet the jobs of the future. So this is something that we need to galvanise. Uh, and you know, the first thing is, is, well, what is being done? Uh, and the positive news is that there are things being done. You're hearing it. You've heard it today uh, with things like Good Things Foundation, and many of you, all of you, are engaged in that. So the government has started a number of initiatives, whether it's through the Digital Skills Partnership being led uh, by DCMS, uh, Department of Culture, Media uh, and Sport, uh, and they've got six uh, satellites across the UK which are really starting to make a difference, building on some of these local community initiatives. The DFE have launched the Essential Digital Skills Framework. Uh, and in fact, Liz and I were just talking about this. I, I think there's a probably a better way of, of, of actually painting this picture. But what it's fundamentally saying is that when you look at those individual people, when you look at the, the, the examples that we've shared, 21% of the UK population don't know how to do a Google search. If we look at payments, if we look at all the activities that increasingly we take for granted, whether it's in engaging in social media, whether it is the survey for the, for, for the census in 2021, or if we look at um, you know, basic government services, if those are digitally enabled and we have not created the skills in our, in our society uh, to tackle that, then we are going to create this divided society. So, as I said, the good thing is that we are starting to head in the right direction. We're building on some of the framework that the government's been laying out. But more importantly, we have also uh, seen a huge number of initiatives uh, around the UK. And in fact, some of the work that we've been doing over the last year, there are some two, 300 uh, different uh, skills building initiatives that are around the UK. Some of those through organisations uh, and many of you in this room some from the bigger uh, businesses out, out there, uh, BT, um, Lloyd's, Banking Group, Barclays, uh, Accenture. Uh, and what we're seeing is that at the moment that, yes, there is a degree of focus around adults in work, but we're not yet paying enough attention to children and young adults, and clearly those who have now are out of work, who are still a core part of society, we are not focusing on them. So the challenge is, how do we, how do we bring together, how do we mobilise uh, some of this agenda into a, a common strategy? Uh, and that is where uh, we have met, or a number of us have met over the past year, to look at um, how we use collaboration to bring together many of the initiatives that, uh, that, that we're seeing out there. 
The second part of it is also how do we widen the breadth of, uh, of that skill base? Because as we analyze those two or 300 initiatives that are out there today, what we see is that the focus of those initiatives is largely around digital literacy. And whilst that is really healthy, that is the ability, obviously, to get on and do, do a Google search, to look at how one might do a, a pet transaction online. We are also increasingly aware of some of the wider uh, challenges that are out there, the increase of cyber and, therefore, the importance of digital security, protecting our digital identity. Increasingly, we're seeing, particularly in schools, but also in the workplace, a significant rise in mental health issues. And some of that is being attributed to the digital world. Now, the evidence is pretty thin at this stage because it's a relatively uh, short uh, passage. But fundamentally, what we're saying is how can we start to collaborate to work together to a common agenda such that we create a platform uh, that enables us to, uh, to, to do that? Uh, and so enter the concept of future.now, which at the moment is a young coalition of organizations uh, with the founding partners, Good Things Foundation, BT, Lloyds, uh, Banking Group, Accenture, City of London, and Nominet, uh, and increasingly now a number of other organizations who are working with government, because at the end of the day, whilst government can set policy, uh, and Helen in particular is a great advocate of, of, of squeezing government to get money out of them, but they are not going, <laughs> she is, she's very good, she is very good. But unfortunately, and this isn't a political criticism, but let's, it's a reality, they're not going to get it done. They can set the policy framework, but they're not going to enable the execution. They've got some great initiatives, like the DSP, the Digital Skills Partnership, but they're not going to get it done. So part of it is, is starting to say, well, how can we create a, uh, an ambition that is focusing on not helping just tens of thousands, not even millions, but tens of millions? We're talking about how we fundamentally uh, move the needle uh, here in the UK. Uh, and so the aim is really to, uh, to build on what Helen was talking about it, as far as Good Things Foundation and the work she is doing and saying, well, if you can do that at scale with multiple organisations working together under a common strategy, uh, how, how can we achieve that? Uh, and the reason why this is, I think, important is that when we start to unpick uh, the, 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 the game plan to, to achieve that, the first issue is that it isn't actually a lack of capability in terms of the digital skills partners out there to be able to deliver this. And one of our biggest challenges is motivation. Uh, and certainly if we look at the Lloyd's uh, Consumer Digital Index that they, they published last May, 39% of the population all right, who do not have the basic uh, digital skills today cited motivation as the fundamental barrier to them uh, picking up those skills. Yes, there were then examples of 16% of them who didn't have access to the internet. There were those who couldn't afford access to data. But 40%, nearly, well, 39% of the population who lack the skills, it is motivation. So part of that is developing a campaign with our creative and media industries to change the needle, to change the, the rhetoric around why this is important. But alongside that, then, is the need to, to really help and make it easy. I was at the, um, uh, at the Lloyd's uh, uh, Business uh, and Charity Index launch this morning. And speaking with a number of small businesses, it, it just comes across as too difficult. Part of the challenge is how do we make it easier? Uh, and again, Learn My Way is a, is a great way of achieving that. But it, it's getting a number of those uh, capabilities uh, signposted and made easier for businesses to follow. So the aim is to actually bring together the platform of these uh, hundreds of capabilities under MAP in a way that makes it easier for people to uh, access uh, these facilities. And then for those that are really, really driving and moving the needle, whether it's the three million people that Good Things Foundation are tackling, to actually magnify that and to actually use the power of the network of Future.now to, to actually drive both greater funding but also greater visibility uh, to uh, that agenda. Uh, and finally, to, uh, to measure, because ultimately government money uh, and, and our own well-being will be dependent on actually moving that needle. And the reality is, of course, is that we're in a moving environment. And so moving that needle is not only moving the needle absolutely, but relatively to the fact that we're going to continue to see a pace of change. So developing behavioural shifts around lifelong learning and actually creating a culture that, it, that we don't just leave school and that's our education, but that, that we actually create this construct of lifelong learning 
through our workplace, through our communities, uh, is a critical part of, of where we're going. So at this juncture, um, we are, we're building the coalition. Many of you may wish to be part of that coalition. Uh, we're encouraging large organisations across the country because this, again, is not a, just a London-centric issue. This is a UK issue. Uh, and we're meeting, uh, we've got another coalition meeting coming up, hosted by BT uh, um, late, uh, in uh, early December. But what we're asking businesses uh, and organisations to do is fundamentally three things. First and foremost, um, let us, let us recognise our individual strengths, but focus on a collective action. So we're asking BT to, to leverage its capability, but when it focuses on the Future.Now coalition, to leave its own organisation behind and to focus on that, that bigger agenda. Likewise with Good Things Foundation. So in other words, we're recognising the individual value that these organisations are bringing, but actually focusing on the collective. This isn't a competition between individual businesses and individual platforms. This is about how we work together to, to, to really achieve uh, the goal of the 100%, but uh, you know, 30, 40 million people. But secondly, in doing that, how do we leverage our own capability? So we're asking organisations, whether it is, uh, for example, uh, most recently working with one of the big accounting firms, PwC, how are they going to be committed to actually taking the skill base of their employees up? You know, they've got some 60,000 employees here in this country. How are they going to be doing that? And if we do that with uh, many of, or 100 or so of the largest organisations in the country, that will get us a significant way. But let's also reflect that half of the UK is driven by small businesses. So how do we create that platform that enables them to, uh, to upskill their employees and to come online? And again, whilst we saw some good news today that half of, of our UK uh, SMEs, nearly 5 million SMEs, are actually digitally uh, literate and digitally well advanced, half aren't. So again, we've got a, a huge nut to crack. So part of that is, is how do we leverage our own capability and pull some of those resources? So whether it is Google's garage, Google Garage, whether it's uh, BT with its, its Barefoot program, whether it's Good Things Foundation uh, with, with, with Learn My Way, Barclays with its life skills, Lloyds Bank with its uh, digital academy, all of these programs, together with the digital skills providers that are out there, how can we leverage that capability and pull resources to drive up the nation's skills? Uh, and in doing that, create um, the tools, both motivational tools and digital skills tools, for those organisations and individuals uh, who need to boost it. And so really what, what we're talking about here is a collaboration that is building on some of the great work that you've heard today uh, from Good Things Foundation, and as I said, what many of you are tackling. So to my mind, you know, that's, that's where we are. Uh, we're still a nascent uh, a coalition. Uh, we are technically only officially launched on 1010, which we named as Digital Day. Uh, but we are, we've got a pretty good progressive plan uh, with a number of good partners uh, building, including some technology partners like Microsoft and Salesforce. So this is something that hopefully is going to galvanise uh, across, uh, across the UK. So I just wanted to share that with you today to give you a sense that, you know, I mean, it's really to build on what we're hearing here, but also to give you a sense that actually the power of collaboration can really make a difference uh, and encourage you to be part of that. Uh, and on that note, I think we were going to take some questions. Or not? We are. We are. Brilliant. Thank you Pleasure. very much. Can you sit down? Thank you. Thank you.